الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he is the creator, sustainer and controller of the universe and all within and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions and all those who follow them with righteousness until the end of time and may Allah be exalted, cause us all to be among them Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Often in life, we face situations that sometimes may result in a person wanting to take their own life. Either they don't see any value in, in being alive, or the pain that they're experiencing in their view is so unbearable that the best thing is to just end their life. In our world today, there, there are countries or there are places where you can actually, you're permitted to take your own life. In the Star Papers this morning, I was reading an article about a Belgian person who suffers from a degenerative disease took away the use of her, uh, her legs and she actually got permission from the government to take her own life some years ago and despite having these papers and this permission to take her own life she decided to get into sports and she became a, a model per se in uh, people who are disabled and, and, and being able to play sports but eventually she did uh, go ahead and use this permission take, to take her own life so I know we are faced with all kinds of situations and we all may have our own reasoning and justifications for what we do so today I want to share with you a hadith that is read in Sahih by Shaykh Al-Albani in which the Prophet gave us this the Muslim's perspective on the challenges we face in life and despite the fact that someone might think that uh, that ending life is the is the best option that as as, as, a, as a Muslim or as Muslims that is certainly not an option we should even entertain he said alayhi salam la tad'u bil mawt don't make dua, don't ask for death. And don't even wish for death. Don't pray for death and don't wish for death. As I said, people, you know, justify decisions they make with all kinds of justifications. But at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us life. And whatever we experience in life, whether it is comfort in life or it is hardships and trials in life they're all tests even the comfort in life you know the one in pain may look at the one who seems to be in no pain and you know be comfortable in life and the person is thinking wow why can't my life be like that person's life you know no pain no worries but that pain-free life and that comfortable life is also a test. Allah says, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِّ فِتْنَةً And we will test you with good and with evil. It's a test, it's a fitna, it's a trial. The Prophet ﷺ advised us that as Muslims, we don't even pray for death or wish for death, let alone get legal permission to, to take your own life. لا تدعو بالموت ولا تتمنوا Do not pray for death and do not even wish for death. 
So in kana ahadun da'iyan la budda fal yaqul. The Prophet says, but if someone feels that the pain they're, they're living and experiencing is, is, is so excruciating that they must pray, he said then, then the person should say, Allahumma ahyini ma kanati al-hayatu khayran li. The person should pray and say, Oh Allah, cause me to live as long as life is good for me. Not, Oh Allah, I want to die, I can't bear this pain, take my life now. Oh Allah, ahyini ma kanati al-hayatu khayran li. Give me life, cause me to live as long as life is good for me. And cause me to die if death is better, better for me. This is the dua that the Prophet ﷺ recommended someone makes at the time when they feel that there is no option in front of them except perhaps to die. And so from this dua, we see that the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to have a, a positive outlook on life and the challenges we face in life. You know, in another hadith that is also sahih, he visited an individual who was ill, as was his uh, norm. And in talking with the relatives of this individual, he found out that the person used to pray and say, Oh Allah, Whatever punishment you used to, you would, you would have punished me with in the hereafter, punish it with me now in this life. Oh Allah, whatever punishment you would have punished me with in the hereafter, punish me with the same punishment now in this life. Because the person is thinking if one has to face Allah's punishment in this life, it is still easier than having to face his punishment in the hereafter, which is true. But the Prophet ﷺ, when he heard this, he did not approve of this kind of prayers. And he said, is any one of you incapable of saying, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ Is anyone incapable of saying, our Lord, give us good in this world and good in the next world and save us from the punishment of the fire? In other words, it's better to pray for forgiveness than to ask Allah to punish us. And even if we pray for forgiveness, we may or may not be forgiven. But it is still better to pray for forgiveness and pray for good things rather than praying for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life as opposed to in the hereafter. Although in the bigger picture, for one to be punished for their sins in this life is better than to be punished for the sins in the hereafter. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, no, we still don't pray for Allah's punishment. We seek His forgiveness. We ask Him for good in this life and good in the hereafter. And part of the good that we ask Him for in this life and the hereafter is forgiveness. So despite the challenges we would face in life, and how much sometimes it might we might think that you know what death is, is 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 the better option it is not we put our trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave us life and he gave everything a live life and it is only he who only he who has the authority or the right to take that life this is why brothers and sisters when we slaughter an animal even for food we just don't cut the throat of the animal and then we, we, we eat it. Before we cut the throat of the animal, we say what? Bismillah. We say Allah's name, why? Because by saying Allah's name, we are expressing our recognition of the fact that Allah gave this animal life, we didn't. And so although we need the animal for food, we're not just, you know, killing for, for fun or for sport. We need it for food. We still take this life in the name of the Creator who gave it life. That's why we say Bismillah. Or we say Allah's name at the time of slaughtering. This is the recognition that Allah gave this animal life and we only take it 
in the name of the one who gave it life in the first place. So the Prophet ﷺ has taught us to be optimistic people. Despite the challenges we face, look on the bright side. In fact, in, in a number of other uh, hadith that are also authentic, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that the challenges we face in life are the means through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins in this life before we face Him on the Day of Judgment. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah from Surah An-Nisa, لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Allah says, whoever does anything evil will be rewarded for it. The companions were troubled by this statement. Because they thought that's it. Who doesn't commit sins? And if we're going to be rewarded for every single sin we commit, subhanAllah, they saw that as being doomed. So they came to the Prophet Abu Bakr Siddiq came to the Prophet and he told the Prophet O Messenger of Allah, who amongst us does not commit any sin? And if we're going to be rewarded for every sin we commit, then it seems to be that we're all doomed. And the Prophet told him that for the believers, in fact, in that hadith, in that exchange with Abu Bakr Siddiq, the Prophet asked him, don't you become ill? Don't you feel sadness? Don't you become fatigued? He said, this, these are the ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives or rewards the believers for their sins in this life. By the challenges and the trials and the hardships they face in life and the pain. So the Prophet has taught us to have a positive, that Islam provides a positive perspective on these negative things and challenges that people face in life. And it is this positivity that we need in order to give us hope. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open our hearts and minds so that not only can we understand the wonderful message He has revealed for the upliftment of mankind, but that we would be inspired and motivated to live by the message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to never lose hope in His forgiveness and His mercy and His grace and His blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the truth as the truth and help us to follow that. May He show us the wrong as wrong and help us to avoid that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us with that which is good for us in this world as well as good in the hereafter and save us all from the punishment of the fire. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُ Thank <laughs> you.